Hi, I'm George and this week we're going to revisit three projects that we have wanted to do for quite a while. Uh, the first one's flower rockets. We've flown flower rockets over the years, uh, but since people have suggested maybe we should try colored chalk or holly powder or the throwing powder that you might see at festivals. Uh, and so over Christmas, Santa brought three and a half kilos of it. So let's see how that works in a rocket. Here we are at the Malayli launch site. It's just a little cold and a lot windy. Apologies ahead of time for the wind noise in the video. We are using one of our smaller water rockets to fly with this holly powder. Because we wanted to have a couple of different coloured layers, we decided to lock the lower part of the water rocket into the launcher first and then pour the powder in from the top. We're using half a bottle as a funnel. The powder doesn't free flow and so we have to give it a little bit of encouragement for it to go through the top of the pressure chamber. We decided to put in the whole half kilo of yellow, because why not? There would be a lot of powder that would come out before the rocket really got going. And so for the second colour we decided to only put in 200 grams to see how that would look. The back of the powder bag did not specify how much should go in a rocket. It's a pretty messy affair pouring powder in strong wind. Then we unscrew the funnel and screw in the top bottle with the parachute deployment mechanism. For more information on how flower rockets work, check out the link in the description. And then we pack the parachute. For this flight, the rockets fill to 120 psi. Here you can see what happens inside the rocket as we start to pressurize it. Okay, let's launch this thing. Here it is in real time. And here it is slowed down about eight times. In case you were wondering, the powder is non-toxic, it's biodegradable, it doesn't stain and easily washes off. So we've got just under three kilos left of it and we plan on using it in a few more experiments over the coming weeks, so stand by for that. Next up, let's have a look at Lumpy. Uh, you might remember the rocket that had bent under the heating conditions. Uh, it was since converted into a high power rocket. Now a year ago we didn't have a chance to launch it because of the high winds, but this week finally the winds were low enough at the high power launch site and so we managed to launch it. So here is that flight. We're flying this on a CTI H110 motor from which we have removed the ejection charge because the rocket's using Horizon's electronic deployment mechanism. We've also got an altimeter one on board along with a small 808 camera. Here we're just locking the deployment mechanism into place. Then it's off to the launch pad. Because we don't have any rail buttons on this rocket, we're using the launch tower. We've had to angle it quite a bit into the wind so it doesn't drift as far. We're still using the brake wire to detect launch. So let's see it in action. And here it is again from a couple of different angles. It drifted about a half a kilometre downrange. Then 
The Altimeter said it went to 2,382 feet, which is pretty close to what the sim said. I think we're going to retire this rocket now. So lastly, we wanted to refly the Nova rocket. Uh, you might remember last time it had a nice crash from a high altitude and completely destroyed the nose cone. We weren't quite sure why the deployment didn't uh, happen. Uh, so we reprinted it, uh, put in all new electronics, and we also hydrostatically tested the pressure chamber to make sure it was still okay. And this is how that launch went. Here, we're just testing the electronics on the deployment mechanism prior to flight. Then the shock cord gets attached. We're filling the rocket here with about 700 mils of water and a little bit of shampoo. This rocket also doesn't have rail buttons and so we need to use the tower launcher again. And here's the launch. We're only pressurizing the rocket to 300 psi, which should make it reach about a thousand feet. I don't know about you, but this doesn't quite look right to me. The nose gun again is completely obliterated. The battery, servo motor, everything's gone. But I think we can rescue the servo timer. On a positive note, the pressure chamber looks like it survived yet again intact. So that's two out of five failures, which isn't all that great, obviously. Uh, and it tends to point more towards the mechanism itself rather than the electronics, which we double checked before the launch. Um, so I, I think we're going to redesign it slightly. We're going to add uh, some kind of ejection mechanism that forces the parachute out uh, rather than just letting it fall out. And I think that's going to solve that problem, but stay tuned for that. But anyway, that's all for this week. We've got lots of footage for the Horizon project that still needs editing. Uh, and so we hope to get to that very shortly. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.